Have you ever been just Googling maybe something like DIY or homemade body wash and came across recipes that look like this? And they always seem to come from Pinterest or just some kind of natural, green, friendly blogger. So let's talk about those recipes today. Hey everybody, my name is Tara and my channel is all about showing you guys how to formulate skincare products. Slowly we're branching out into like more hair care and stuff like that. But anyways, that's besides the point. Today is the second video of my new series. It's actually kind of a revamped series. I've done this series before, but we're gonna do it better this time around. This series is formulating skincare products for beginners. And my last video, if you're new to formulating, I recommend going and watching. It's titled, So You Wanna Start Making Skincare Products. And I basically talk about what to expect when uh, getting into the hobby of formulating cosmetics. So go watch that video. If you're a beginner or if you're new here, check it out. This video, I want to talk all about those Pinterest DIY skincare recipes you see all over the internet. When I first started formulating cosmetics, and maybe you have had this experience as well if you're not a beginner, or I guess maybe you are a beginner and you are currently using these recipes. Um, this is a very common place to start, but I don't really recommend this to be where to start. Why do I recommend not starting there? Because these recipes are not safe, they're not stable, and they're just a breeding ground for mold, and bacteria and can cause serious damage to your skin. So let's go back to these recipes I popped up on the screen earlier. So here is a DIY body wash and here is a DIY body lotion. These are actual recipes I found online. I'm not gonna give away who made these recipes. I just searched on Pinterest DIY body wash and DIY lotion and just clicked on something random and these were the ones that I got. So let's break it down and talk about why these recipes are not stable, safe, or recommended. So like I said, these recipes are where I started. I started making stuff exactly like this. So for me personally, they do hold like a little special place in my heart because when I look back at these recipes, it really reminds me of how far I've came, how much I've learned, and it really does remind me of how proud I should be of myself. But these recipes also appall me because I know they're not safe or stable. So please, please do not begin your formulating journey with these types of recipes. So let's talk about why these are not safe or stable or recommended. So the first thing that I see wrong with both of these recipes is that neither of them contain a preservative. Since both of these recipes contain water-based ingredients, it needs a preservative. At first glance, you would think neither of these contain water because there's nothing in the recipe that says water. But if you take a look at the DIY body wash recipe, it contains glycerin. Glycerin is a water-based ingredient. So that means it will create this recipe to be a breeding ground for mold and bacteria and could potentially do damage to your skin because where there's water, there is life, which brings upon mold and bacteria and all these nasties that we don't want into our formulas. Also, this recipe contains castile soap, liquid castile soap to be exact, and there is an ongoing debate on if liquid castile soap needs to be preserved or not. So I'm not going to go into the details of that, but even if we throw that out, it doesn't matter because this recipe still contains glycerin, so it's going to need a preservative. If we take a look at the DIY body lotion recipe, this recipe has aloe vera gel in it. That is a water-based ingredient. And this recipe claims to have the grapefruit extract as its preservative. Grapefruit extract is not a preservative. I don't wanna go into too much detail about preservatives now because this video is just my second video of my series for formulating skincare products for beginners. And I don't wanna to talk too much about preservatives yet, but just keep in mind that there are a lot of ingredients that are claimed to be preservatives natural preservatives to be exact, that aren't preservatives. I did a whole video over this topic, I'll link it down below, and I talked all about what ingredients are commonly mistaken to be preservatives that are not preservatives. If we take a look back at the DIY body wash recipe, uh, you see there's vitamin E oil in it. 
The creator of this formula may be claiming that the vitamin E oil is its preservative for this formula, but again, vitamin E oil is a common ingredient that is mistaken to be a preservative, but it's not. The reason why it's mistaken is because vitamin E oil helps oils from going rancid, which doesn't make it a preservative, it just helps oils from going rancid. That's all it does. It doesn't preserve the product. So both of these recipes contain water, which means they both need a preservative. That's my first problem with them. Both of these recipes are just breeding grounds for mold and bacteria that can do serious damage to your skin, so they're not safe. Also, another thing wrong with the DIY body lotion recipe is that we have oil ingredients, and then we have one water ingredient, being the aloe vera gel, and also the grapefruit extract, I'm assuming is a water-based extract as well. How are these going to mix? Water and oil don't mix, right? Everybody knows this, like a kindergartner knows this. Everybody knows this. So how are these supposed to stay mixed together? They're not, because there's no emulsifier. And emulsifiers are something we're gonna be talking about later in this series. An emulsifier helps blend oil and water together. That's all I'm gonna say for now. But this doesn't have an emulsifier either. So let's just say we took out the aloe vera gel from this DIY body lotion. That recipe is actually kind of okay now. I do have my own personal issues with it because it's super, super oily and greasy and I wouldn't like it. But as somebody who's new with formulating, you could follow this recipe and it would be okay. It'd be greasy, <laughs> but it's stable and it's safe, but don't add water in it. Take out the grapefruit extract and take out the aloe vera gel. That'd be better. So back to something else that makes both of these formulas not okay with me. It's not necessarily like bad or unsafe. Actually, it could be unsafe. It's the fact that these are measured in cups, tablespoons, and teaspoons. These are not accurate measurements for formulating cosmetics. Formulas are written in percents and then later transferred to a weight measurement. For me, I like to measure in grams. I know this is very confusing if you're new to formulating, but formulas are written in percents, then transferred to recipes that are weighed in grams or ounces, some sort of weight. So cosmetics aren't measured in tablespoons and teaspoons and cups. They're measured in weight. For me, grams. Some people out there use ounces. But that's way too big of a measurement for me. I like grams and that's what I recommend for you too. So I will be talking more about like the actual formulas with percents and weights more in a later video. I'll talk all about writing, how to write a formula for cosmetics later on in the series. So don't worry about that for now. Just know that it's not accurate to measure in cups, tablespoons, or teaspoons. Not an accurate way of measurement. Why, you may ask. So let's go over to lotioncrafter.com. This is a website to buy all kinds of ingredients to formulate your skincare products with. So if you go to any ingredients and you scroll to the bottom or click over to this thing over here, it'll give you a suggested or recommended usage rate. Some people say suggested usage rate, some people say recommended usage rate. And it's always in percents. It can be one to 10%, one to 20%, five to 10%, one to 100%. Every ingredient is unique in its own way. And every ingredient has a different recommended usage rate and it's always in percents. So how in the world would you transfer 5% in cups or teaspoons or tablespoons? It is possible, but there's no way to accurately do it because you could literally weigh something out with a tablespoon and then weigh that same thing out again and actually like take the actual weight of it and it could be different. So tablespoons, teaspoons, and cups are not an accurate way of measurement for formulating, especially when we get down to the more uh, ingredients like preservatives. You really, really need to be accurate with your measurement to make sure you're not using too much and you also don't wanna be using too little. And the best way to do this is use percentages and transfer that into weight. And you wanna make sure you have accurate measurements, which is why I recommend grams because it's a very small, accurate measurement compared to ounces because ounces are bigger. Hope that makes sense. I know it's confusing, but we'll talk more about the actual formulating of recipes later. Just right now, no cups, tablespoons, teaspoons aren't right. It's not gonna work, sorry. I know it sounds easier, but it's not accurate and it's not safe. So here's another issue I have, specifically with the body wash recipe. The pH of this recipe is just too high. And the reason I know it's too high is because it's made with castile soap. Castile soap, any type of soap, if it's soap, it has to have a pH of eight or higher. If it's not, then it's not soap. So I know immediately since this has castile soap, it has to have a pH of at least eight 
which for me is just too high for me. And if you didn't know, your skin's pH is around 5.5. So it is best to use products around that pH range. And for someone like me who has super sensitive skin, I need to make sure I'm using things that are balanced in pH. Some people may find it works okay for them to use soaps that have high pHs to each their own. Do what you want, I'm not your mom. I did used to use a recipe very similar to this when I first started and my skin was fine. But after about a year of using it, I did notice my skin became drier because my pH was off balance. So this is why I don't really recommend this because the pH is too high. If you do wanna use a recipe similar to this, just go out and buy some Dr. Broner's Castile Soap. You can get it from Kroger, probably Walmart. I'm sure they have it, Target, Amazon. You can get it anywhere. Just use the Dr. Broner's Castile Soap. Put it in like a smaller bottle. There you go. Soap. For me personally, that's not what I would choose to use, but you know, you do you. And if you just want something simple, then that's something simple. So one last issue I have with the DIY body lotion recipe. I already mentioned that it's super greasy and super oily. I don't even need to make it to know that. I already know it because I've made very similar things in the past. Um, my issue with it is that it's not a lotion. This is a body butter. This is not a lotion. A lotion is like 50% water, maybe even like 60, 70% water. This is definitely a body butter, not a lotion. So that's my last issue with it. And also the fact that it's super oily and greasy and yeah. So basically those are my main issues with these recipes. So there are tons of other recipes out there like these on the internet. And this is why I don't really recommend making them. They're not safe, they're not stable. They're just breeding grounds for mold and bacteria and I don't recommend you making them. Now there are probably a few, you know, DIY recipes on Pinterest that are okay, but for the most part, they're not and I don't recommend them. So by now, I think you guys understand. I don't like these recipes. They're all over the internet, especially on Pinterest. And I know there are probably some DIY recipes out there on the internet that are fine and safe and they could be measured in cups as well. That's possible, but I haven't seen any personally. For the most part, I see stuff like this and I don't recommend it because it's not safe. So if you're serious about making actual professional skincare products that are going to feel good on your skin, that are gonna be safe for the skin, that are actually going to make your skin better, then stay tuned or watch whether, whatever content I have already here on my channel. But if you're a beginner, stay tuned for the rest of this series. I have tons of videos already here on my channel all about formulating. I have tons of recipes on face washes, body washes, moisturizers, serums, all kinds of stuff. But if you're a beginner, hold off and uh, the next video will take you to the next step on what I recommend you doing when you're a beginner to formulating skincare products. So let's move on to my Patreon shoutouts. So first up, we have Stardust Bath & Body over on Instagram, Nature's Farm Girl at naturesfarmgirl.com, Kennedy's Essentials at kennedysessentials.net, Let's Blend at letsblend.bigcartel.com, Creative with Love at creativewithlove.me, Wallflower Wildflower at wallflowerwildflower.com, Heartfelt Beauty on YouTube if you want some more formulating videos, Sugared underscore Pineapple over on Instagram, KAJ Bath & Body, over on Etsy, Blue Mint Soaps at bluemintsoaps.com, Satara here on YouTube at Salt Air Label over on Instagram, Lenise Beauty at lenisebeauty.com, Ardrew Naturals at ardrewnaturals.com, and Shark City at sharkcitynaturals.com and sharkcitycbd.com. By the way, if you didn't know, I do sell products myself over on Etsy. I'll have my Etsy shop linked down in the description box and I'll have all my lovely patrons linked in the description box as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed my second video to my series of formulating skincare products for beginners. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them down in the comments. Let me know if you started with these types of recipes as well. And uh, let me know if you're actually currently making these kinds of recipes and how you feel about what I just said. Let's talk about it in the comments. So like I said, this is going to be a continuing series. I have lots more videos coming in this series. And also don't worry if you are more of an advanced formulator, someone who's not a beginner that doesn't need these videos, then don't worry, I'll still be doing my normal content along with the series. But also, I recommend watching this series because you might learn something new. And yeah, so that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed and hope to see you guys in my next video. Later. I'm stuck in the motions. I've been consumed by the wrath of time like I'm from unshattered. i
Mama, so 